Alright, it's that time again. It's time to get excited. It is time to get disappointed. Today, we are gonna go over the proposed balance update changes for StarCraft 2's multiplayer. Now, please note, all of the changes that I'm gonna be discussing in this video are in addition to the previous changes that Blizzard has already announced. I will try and recap them, of course, every once in a while when there's a unit um, that we are once more discussing. But regardless, if you want to see the previous videos that I made about the balance changes, I'll leave a link to those down below in the description of this video. Now, I'm, I'm wondering if we are starting to get to a point where this list of changes is final. These massive amounts of changes that Blizzard has been working on are supposed to go live after BlizzCon. Now, I don't know if that means that it's going to be like the 4th of November, but I do think that this list may very well be getting to the point where it's final. So please keep that one in mind. Anyways, let's go ahead and have a look. Hey everyone, thanks for testing out the most recent balance changes and for your continued helpful feedback. After reading over the discussions, we'd like to make a few more changes to the testing matchmaking queue. Alrighty, so first off, we have the Cyclone. Now, I just want to point out that the Cyclone as it is right now in the balance test map is... Basically the unit like we had it in Heart of the Swarm, but compared to like the current version in the multiplayer, it's essentially a unit that looks like a Cyclone. It is called a Cyclone, but it is completely different than the current Cyclone. Let's go ahead and read through it. Cyclone. The attack moving Cyclones will stop at 7 range instead of 5 range when locked onto an enemy target. Previously, when an attacking or an attack moving cyclone would lock onto an enemy target, the cyclone would continue to move towards the target until it was 5 range away. This was due to its weapon having 5 range, but the lock on ability having 7 range. As a result, cyclones would put themselves in danger against 6 range opponents, such as immortals and ravagers. After this change, the cyclone will now behave like other units, stopping at maximum effective range when giving an attack move order. Alrighty. Now, I've been messing around quite a bit with the Cyclone. For those of you that watch the live stream, you know that I've been trying to play the balance test map quite a bit. But the Cyclone, it is, it is very difficult to pinpoint right now. So, the thing about the Cyclone is that when you're trying to play Terran Mech, it is not an essential unit. So what I try and mean with that, or what I'm trying to say with that, is that if you're playing Terran Mech, usually you will be focusing your army composition around Hellions, Siege Tanks, Thors, as well as Vikings and Liberators, right? Those units sort of make up the core of the Terran Mech army. The Cyclone is kind of like, kind of like the Banshee in a way, where it's like an addition to the army that can be really good if your control is good, but it's not absolutely essential. As it is right now, I actually kind of like the way that the Cyclone is playing. It's a very different unit, but what it does allow you to do is micro it to no end. You know how like Protoss players can go and, and do like Archon drops and all that, and if you're really good, you can get a lot of value out of the War Prism with the two Archons, but if you kind of suck, it, it's very difficult uh, to, to deal the damage. It kind of feels like Cyclones are going to be a similar unit, where they are going to be a micro bow unit in the Terran mech army composition, which I am really excited for. I think it's a really cool change. Now, there's no denying it's an expensive unit. You need to create it out of a tech lab, so every time you make it, you're like, eh, should I make a siege tank or a cyclone? And I think if you're uh, if you're playing like on the lower end of the ladder, or maybe even up to like Master League or so, you probably want to go. To, uh, you probably want to go with the siege tank instead, just because it's the better like all round unit. But I'm excited to see what kind of strategies pro gamers will be able to get out of this, because one of the issues that Terran Mech sometimes runs into is that it's sort of just like. It's really good in the early game with like Hellions and whatnot, right? And it's pretty good in the late game as well because of all these strong army compositions. But the mid game can be a little bit strange. And um, I think that the Cyclone may very well steer uh, mech players away from just simply sitting back for like 20 minutes to playing something a lot more aggressive. For example, we've been seeing Gumiho go for really, really cool mech-based compositions already. He doesn't really play with Cyclones very much until like the late game and sometimes in the very early game. I wonder if this would make the Cyclone more of like a mid-game kind of unit and something that's actually going to be viable to micro with. It's gonna be exciting to see. Now, this is mostly just a, a nice little improvement to make the Cyclone just a more reliable unit, which I don't think anyone is gonna complain about. Um, but there's no denying that the Cyclone is gonna need some thorough testing. And, you know, I, I can't really give you 
you know, my my exact opinion on it right now, just because it's it's so very different, and it's it's just um, it's a unit we have seen before in StarCraft 2, but it plays very very differently than it uh, than it does in the current version of StarCraft. So we'll see. Alrighty, next change is to the Medivac. The high capacity fuel tanks upgrade named uh, change or the name change rather to Rapid Reignition System. All right. Uh, that, that seems very important. Uh, so the high capacity fuel tanks is now going to be called a rapid reignition system. I wonder how they come up with these names. It's like they have like a random name generator. <laughs> Anyways, since the effect of this upgrade are changing, we're going to make an update to its name to better capture its new functionality. We also want to make the t or we also want to take the time rather to clarify its new functionality. So basically, the Medivac is a more microable unit, which once again I like a lot. A Medivac without any upgrades can boost for 5.71 seconds with an 8.57 second of downtime. So that means 40% uptime on the boost. A Medivac with the old high capacity fuel tanks upgrade could boost for 8.57 seconds with a 5.71 seconds of downtime. So that's 60% uptime. However, with the new rapid reignition system, the upgrade will be able to boost you for 5.71 seconds with a 3.57 seconds of downtime, which means you have slightly more uptime. And if you're a better player, you're going to be able to to press the button more often and therefore micro your Metafex a little bit more. One of the uh, least significant changes, but it may be one of those things that allow like really good Terran players to sort of like treat their Metafex more like war prisms. What we, for example, seen right is that that um, once again I'm, I'm bringing up uh, I'm bringing up Gumiho once more. I've been really impressed with his strategies lately. I mean, I've got a video going up on him. Um, I think either tomorrow or the day after, where he does a best of five series. It's epic. You should really go ahead and check it out. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. It's it's honestly one of the best games of TVZ that I've seen in recent times. But regardless, um, one of the things that he does is that he boosts in with Medivex. He drops off the Thors and then he hides the Medivex in a location where they can't easily be shot at. And I think that kind of strategy is going to be a lot better because right now, um, with this change, right, to, I guess, the Rapid Reignition system, you're going to be able to boost in, drop the Thors off, start hitting at a hatchery or whatever, move the Medivex away, and then once the Zerk or the Protoss player comes into the fence, you can boost in again and pick them up and get on out of there. Which is a really cool system, right? But only three and a half seconds of downtime? You can easily pull that off. I mean, it's three and a half seconds from what essentially was like six seconds. That's a big difference in StarCraft terms, that is. So that's cool. I, I don't mind this whatsoever. Um, I think these changes here to both the Cyclone and the Medivac are excellent. The Protoss. Alrighty. So this is one of the things that a lot of people were very hesitant about. Basically, in the previous patch, Blizzard um, changed the pickup radius or the pickup range rather of the War Prism from 6 to 5, but it's now being reverted back from 5 to 6. After reviewing feedback, we have decided to refer the pickup range from 5 to 6 as we'd like for all races to feel like they have strong options out of the gate with the new patch. Now, the main reason I feel like why a lot of people are um, a little hesitant with the current version of the War Prism is because I consider it to be quite literally the strongest unit in the game. And I think with me, a lot of other people. I mean, uh, well, I say strongest unit in the game. What I, what I meant to say is like strongest unit for the Protoss. It seems a little bit weird that a dropship and like a warping mechanic is, is the strongest unit for Protoss. But I honestly think with good micro, you can get so much value out of the War Prism. And it's one of the most scary units to play against whatever race you play. War Prisms are always going to be a menacing force. Because if you look away from your main base for a little bit and all of a sudden there's like Archons in your middle line or there's like a, a, a big Zealot Warping, you can be in a world of trouble, right? And we've seen um, pro gamers in particular getting really, really, really good at uh, microing the War Prism, and it's pretty intense how much value you can get out of it. Anyways, um, I think this might... Um, so, so one of the reasons why it might be a little too much is because, the, because of the cost reduction of the robotics facility. So in one of the previous changes, Blizzard basically made the robotics facility a little bit cheaper, so it's more in line with the Stargate as well as the Twilight Council. Um, I think that is fine. But maybe they should add some additional cost to the War Prism then instead. Just so it won't be coming out like an additional like 5 to 10 seconds earlier. Which might be, once again at the top level, a bit of an issue. But we'll see. We'll see. I, I would not mind it myself if they added like another like, I don't know, 50 minerals or so to the cost of the War Prism. Just to make it slightly more expensive. Um, and I think that might just, you know, 
make it just a little bit more balanced. But it's, it's all things considered a relatively minor deal. Alrighty, the countdown timer. Ooh, I haven't read about this one yet. We like the addition of the new countdown timer because it provides player with a smoother transition from the loading screen to the start of the match. So what we basically have right now in the balance test map is that if you load up a game, first off you have the load screen, and then there is a three second countdown timer before the match actually starts. So what I found myself having several times while uh, playing the balance test mode is that I'm I'm not scared to like all tap out and like change my music or whatever that I'm listening to while playing because I know there's gonna be a three second countdown. Whereas right now in StarCraft 2, sometimes the loading screen takes like, I don't know, two seconds and sometimes it takes like 30 seconds, right? It's hard to judge and you can't really, you can't really look away very easily from the screen. So I, I kind of like it. Um, however, we've discovered some issues with the feature and would like to resolve them before pushing this countdown timer live. Yes, I noticed that too. Sometimes it just simply wouldn't show up. We'll be removing a countdown timer from the testing matchmaking queue for now, but we plan to re reintroduce it at a later date. Huh. So wait, does that mean they are not going to be pushing the patch live yet for another, I don't know, couple weeks? Interesting. I'm assuming it's going gonna, it's gonna to not be any later than like late November. I don't think it makes a lot of sense, because basically right after BlizzCon wraps up, there's going to be a little bit of downtime. For usually, I would say like the last two months or so of the year, there's like a little bit of downtime where most pro gamers will be taking a little bit of a break. Obviously, we have Christmas coming up relatively soon, I know. It sounds like it's far away, but Christmas is going to be here before you know it. Um, and usually there's not going to be a whole lot of tournaments until, um, until early January. Now, there is one event coming up late November called Home Story Cup, and I'm curious to see whether or not these changes are going to be live by the time Home Story Cup hits, but we'll see. Anyways, um, yeah, so we'd like to introduce a um, countdown timer. All right, that's basically what it is. It's just a little bit buggy right now. Um, in my experience, sometimes the countdown timer would just simply never show up. Like, you load it up into the game and it would just start, and you're just confused about what's going on. It needs to be reliable, obviously, but that seems like a relatively easy fix. Well, I'm I'm no I'm no coder. I'm not I'm I'm not a programmer, but I uh, I can imagine it must be something that you can relatively easily fix, right? A timer can't be the can't be the hardest thing. All right, upcoming changes. We're also planning to introduce two additional changes in the new season, but they require code modifications, so they cannot be directly added to the balance testing bolt. We plan to introduce the following changes in the upcoming post BlizzCon patch. So there's some cool changes right here. These are all very solid quality of life improvements. SCV. SCV single click selection priority will now be higher than the buildings they are constructing. What does that mean? During intense bunker rushes, the ability for the bunker to be completed can often mean the difference between success and failure. The defender is highly incentivized uh, to destroy the SCV building the bunkers, but it's currently difficult to do so, partially because buildings under construction can block the ability to click on the SCV building it. We don't believe this interaction should be a core skill testing component of a StarCraft game, so we'll be making a change that allows SCV to be more easily clicked while constructing structures. So what does this mean, right? Say you're playing Zerg and you're getting bunker rushed by a Terran player. The Terran will build a bunker like near your natural, you scout it in time, and you see a couple Marines are already coming up. That's like alarm mode, right? That's when panic modes get activated and you basically want to kill uh, both the Marines as well as the SCV. Now, what sometimes is an issue is clicking on the SCV that's building the bunker. You know how like SCVs go around and shift around buildings when they're making that? It's completely random. There is no way you control that. So basically, once you're constructing a, 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 a bunker, sometimes it starts off in the bottom left, sometimes it shifts to the top right, sometimes it stays there for like you know, 10 seconds, and you're like, wait, is it ever gonna move? You don't really know. However, sometimes the SCV can sit in a corner where you literally have to tilt the screen if you're a Zerg to attack move on it. It's a little bit of a difficult thing to click on, and you can imagine that if the SCV is like right in plain sight, and you can just click it easy peasy, uh, you're gonna be able to pick it off. Whereas if it's like hiding under like a, a random number generator, right? Under like a random uh, uh, mechanic in a game, uh, it's, it's sometimes a little frustrating because you're going down to what seems to be a pretty stupid bunker rush. So, SCV's single click selection priority will now be higher than the buildings they are constructing. Meaning that if you click on the SCV while it's building, it's not gonna select the building, but it will select the SCV instead. That's a really, really nice quality of life change. I've, I've died to bunker rushes more so than I dare to admit. This is also gonna 
Um, this is also gonna help out like with like early game worker harass where people are trying to like kill the SCV, but once again, it's shifting around. Like say you're scouting, right? And you wanna attack the pro or the SCV that's building something. It can be a little bit tricky. Um, I, I really like this change. All right, you ready for more quality of life improvements? At the same time, we're slightly concerned about the effect of this change on early game SCV harass, such as when a Terran building is, uh, or rather such as when a Terran player is building a command center at a natural expansion. So we will be keeping a close eye on this change. I think for the most part, honestly, this is not that big of a deal. Um, I understand the concern, but this is mostly just gonna change some minor, minor early game uh, things. And I don't think anyone is really gonna be all too affected by it, but we'll see. Barracks Factory Starport Tech Lab. If a player tries to lift a structure when there is an upgrade being researched in an attached tech lab, the player will not be able to do so and will receive a red text error message. This is once again a beautiful quality of life improvement. I feel like we've all been there before, right? You're waiting for your stim pack upgrade to finish up. You're sitting there with your barracks selected and somehow, some way, you either lifted it on accident or you meant to switch it over with another building right when stim pack finished. You lift up the building before the green light in the tech lab goes out and the upgrade has to be restarted. One of the most rage inducing things, I feel like if you've been playing StarCraft for a long time, you probably know this feeling. It sucks really badly. So with this change, you're not gonna be able to immediately lift up any of those structures while the tech lab is researching something. Now, obviously you can still go ahead and click the tech lab cancel the upgrade and then lift up the structure that's gonna work just fine um, but this is a really nice quality of life change that i think a lot of people will be very grateful for so this change prevents players from accidentally canceling an upgrade while attempting to lift buildings lastly in order to prepare for the upcoming changes that will go live with the next ladder season we'll be turning off the balance testing matchmaking queue on october 30th during this downtime, we will start implementing our changes and resolving any issues or bugs that may come up. Even though the balance testing matchmaking queue will be off, the balance test mod extension mod will still be available for custom games. Alrighty. I kind of wish we had a better knowledge or a better understanding of when this patch is supposed to go live. Right? I would really like to know when exactly all these changes are planned to go live. Because if it's supposed to be after BlizzCon, that would literally be like, I don't know, like a week and a half, right? Maybe they don't want to immediately release it, but judging by a couple of these things, like for example, the countdown timer, right? It makes it sound as if these changes are supposed to go live a couple weeks after like BlizzCon maybe wraps up at earliest. I guess we will see. I guess we will see. Now, there's also a nice introduction right here of the currently balanced proposed changes. I'll go ahead and scroll through, the, uh, through these real quick in case you want to read them. Just like pause the video so you can quickly check it out. I will also go ahead and post a link to these uh, patch notes down below in the description of the video. So you can go ahead and have, uh, have a look over there a little bit more in depth. I've discussed every single one of these changes as well as my opinions. So once more, if you want to check out my opinion, check the, links, uh, check the links in the description so we can have a look. Now, overall, I am really excited for this. There's some really solid quality of life improvements, and I think overall the game will be better for it. Now, some of you wisely pointed out that Zerk seems to be getting the short end of the stick, right? We see a Hydralisk nerf, we see a Roach Tunneling Claw nerf, we see a... Uh, we, we see a, a Nidus Worm uh, nerf, what is effectively a nerf as well. There's a lot of changes that are made to Zerk. However, I don't think it's as dire as a lot of people make it out to be. At least in my games on the balanced test map, Zerk seems to be doing just fine. One important thing to keep in mind is that a lot of like the late game threats that Zerg would struggle against are also being nerfed. For example, with the changes to the Thor, all of a sudden Mutalisk play is much more viable once again. With the changes to the, to the Carrier, all of a sudden playing Hydras and Queens in the late game as well as like Infested Terrans is gonna be a lot more viable. I think that Infestors in general are gonna be much stronger as well, but I think it's very easy uh, to just simply jump to conclusions too soon. Now, obviously, once these patch changes are live, it's not going to be perfectly balanced. It's probably going to take like a year before it will be perfectly balanced. Maybe maybe a little bit less, but you get what I'm trying to say, right? 
I think, though, overall, in the grand scheme of things, um, it is most definitely going to improve StarCraft 2 in the long run. All of the stupid strategies are being changed. I personally would consider, like, sitting back for 20 minutes and making a max out armory of carriers to be a stupid strategy, right? I don't think anyone enjoys that kind of thing. Um, so I, I'm glad that those strategies are being pushed back a little bit and made a little bit weaker, whereas... You know, strategies that require more skill and units that require more skill, like, for example, uh, the Medivac, as well as the War Prism, as well as, like, uh, the Cyclone, all those units are being buffed up a little bit, which I'm really, really grateful for. And then, obviously, units like the Infester just being a little bit smaller, being easier to clump up. They're, once again, going to be viable. Units that aren't very utilized are going to get a little bit more uh, a little bit more value once again as well. And I think, overall, these changes are really, really cool. But regardless... I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below in the comments section of the video. Now, I, I noticed that sometimes um, I, um, I I feel like I feel like that high school teacher, okay, who's got to like break up fights. Sometimes in the comments section, people are getting a little carried away with their balanced discussions. Can can we try and keep it civilized? That'd be good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for discussing balance, but I don't really want to like start any arguments with anyone. If you have any good feedback though, let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to read it. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day, okay? Do not forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.